the lost art of the vintage house dress, visible underwear making a comeback, and Joan Collins' thoughts on jeans and t-shirts as tragic. Welcome to three more articles on the subject of dress. Welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. My name is Jennifer and I believe that what we wear matters. So in this series, three articles on the subject of dress, I take current event articles that are relevant to today's culture and we discuss them. <laughs> and I have three good ones for you in today's video. We're gonna talk about vintage house dresses. We're gonna talk about a disturbing fashion trend that's making a comeback and the older generation's thoughts on jeans and t-shirts culture. Today I'm drinking mint tea with honey because I still have this cold, it just won't go away. <laughs> so I'm just moving on with my life. I apologize for the sound of my voice. Please forgive me, but it's been like this for a few weeks. So anyway, I'm hoping that it goes away soon. The sponsor for today's video is Italo Jewelry. This is a beautiful jewelry line. They have gorgeous high-end designs, very fancy, very feminine, and they are at discounted prices, so very affordable and budget-friendly for the gorgeous designs that you're getting. They offer affordable, good quality, beautiful jewelry, and they offer a 30-day return policy and a one-year warranty. I will leave their links down below. So the earrings I'm wearing today are these beautiful created white sapphire rose earrings and they have this gorgeous swirl design, so artistic and beautiful, I simply love them. Also this delicate pearl bracelet is an example of one of their beautiful pieces. It is official sterling silver. They have these gorgeous uh, pearls and this beautiful blue stone, just beautiful traditional fancy feminine gorgeous jewelry. I love them. So thank you so much to Italo Jewelry for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so let's get into the three articles on the subject of dress. The first one was sent to me by K.A. Lewis on Facebook, and it's called The Outfit That Has Fallen by the Wayside, The History of the House Dress. And I shared this on Facebook and so many people liked and commented on the post. Clearly this is something that women are interested in. Let's take a look at it now. The Outfit That's Fallen by the Wayside, A History of the Classic House Dress There was a time when women never wore pants and only wore dresses. For formal occasions, there were fine designs in silk, rayon, or wool, but for everyday wear, no woman would have been caught dead without her ubiquitous house dress. Today, women can wear anything they want, but back then, pants and shorts were only for beach vacations at best. Have a look at the evolution of the humble house dress below. So you're gonna see images of uh, the house dress from real pictures in history. As highly functional garments, house dresses had to fulfill a variety of qualifications. They were usually lightweight and cotton, the later design saw polyester and rayon in the mix. They often had pockets, and if it didn't then, a woman's apron certainly did. They were easy to launder and often had a print, something which made hiding stains and repairs a cinch. That is one of my secrets, is to wear a pattern so that if you stain it, you don't notice it. <laughs> In later years, house dresses had a zipper for ease of use. Some iconic designs came out of the tradition of house dresses, like the popular swirl dress, which had originally been marked as a wrap apron. These and other wrap dresses of the 1940s onward were often copied at home since they were so easy to sew up and looked great with a frilly apron over top. Many of the old time house dresses featured a loose waistline, something which gained widespread popularity following World War I. Once the corset had fallen out of fashion in the 1920s, the Great Depression sealed the deal on these looser and less structured dresses. They had the added benefit of being usable throughout a pregnancy, provided they were cut generously to start. Staying at home to do the cooking, cleaning, and child rearing was the life for most women, so it makes sense that maternity wear was sort of built into the features of this style of dress. Many women from the 1930s onward chose to wear their house dresses to do their daily errands, often with gloves and a hat, but for formal or special occasions, if she had other, more expensive dresses, she would have worn those instead. The house dress came from the modest yet liberating Mother Hubbard dress, as first envisioned after the artist Kate Greenaway illustrated her nursery rhyme books showing women and girls in smock dresses in the 1880s. These dresses let women be fully covered yet had no structure and did not require a corset. 
bustle or complicated underskirts like the other fashions of the 19th century. It was the Victorian fight between fashion and purpose embodied in garment form. The style didn't fully catch on for women's clothing, but was the predecessor of the house dresses, which would become a must have for any housewife in the interwar period. The Mother Hubbard dress was not considered fit to wear in public during the 19th century. Isn't that funny? Go <laughs> when I think about what's fit to wear in public today, right? Later generations of women in their house dresses enjoyed a modest amount of fashion thanks to machine printing of fabrics and the advance of the sewing machine. However, the conflict between clothing, which was useful, and those which were fashionable still plagued the housewife well into the atomic era. It was only with the complete change in fashion and job status of women in the 1970s and 80s that the house dress became outmoded in favor of jeans or knits. However, we remember these bastions of home life as something every woman would have owned once upon a time. I find the history of dress fascinating. I love those channels that show, um, you know, an Edwardian lady getting dressed or a woman in the 1930s. So interesting to see how women dressed in history. So when I shared this on Facebook, I couldn't believe the response that I got, that house dresses are really interesting to people. Now, people always say to me, Jennifer, do you clean in your everyday clothes, in your 10 item wardrobe? And my answer to that is yes, I do. So, you know, the dress that I'm wearing today, I would totally clean in this. I'd put on an apron, some gloves and get going, right? But I actually like the idea of having a dress specifically for cleaning, because even that is more presentable than just wearing, you know, sweatpants that you feel that you can get dirty in. Now, I actually find dresses more comfortable to wear than something like a yoga pant or a legging or sweatpants because I feel presentable in them. And when I feel presentable, I feel comfortable. When I don't feel presentable, I don't feel comfortable. I don't even want my kids to see me like that. And that's just how I am. Um, and I know a lot of you are like that too. So I think I might explore the idea of the house dress maybe in a future video, but I would love to know your thoughts down below. And do you have any um, memories of women in your family wearing house dresses? Let us know in the comments down below. Okay, I'm going to need a sip of tea before this next article. And also this might not be appropriate for children. So if you have children watching this, maybe just, you know, send them out of the room. <laughs> Can you believe that? All right, here we go. This article, was also sent to me from a reader and it says, the visible G-string is officially making its comeback. Here's what it means. Yes, you heard that correctly. All right, let's just read the article here. When I met Rowan Blanchard during New York Fashion Week, she's wearing a sequin top and leather pants with a G-string underneath. For those of you who don't know, that's a form of underwear, <laughs> okay? That was pulled up to her hips. She seems to exude confidence, and though she admits she's navigated some personal challenges this year, fashion has become a way for her to express herself. Regarding the night's unexpected choice in underwear, Rowan tells me, my stylist added the G-string. I'm really into it. I tell her I think G-strings are making a comeback, and without hesitation, she replies, I don't know if they ever went away. Okay, Th this is the type of article that I read where I'm like, I must be in La La Land. What? <laughs> what? I feel like these people are in, you know, like a really cosmopolitan city where they just have no idea that the rest of the world would never do something like this, okay? Ever since that convo, I haven't stopped thinking about the complexities of the G-string, what function they serve, and what they say about the people who wear them, how they've come in and out of fashion, and to some extent, I agree with Rowan. They never really did go out of style, though recently it seems that people have been wearing them more proudly again you know, outside of their pants, rather than hiding them behind the fabric covering their bottoms. It's a style more con commonly synonymous with the naughties. After all, the 2000s saw everyone from Britney Spears to Christina Aguilera and Christina Milian and Halle Berry donning the look. Now this article has accompanying pictures, but I'm not going to show them on here because I feel like they're uh, not, you know, family friendly, not G rated and I don't want them on my channel. So anyway, but the, the picture accompanies all of these examples of how the underwear is now um, fashionable to show outside of your pants, okay? Since the underwear items past prime, culture has shifted in some major ways, some not so much. Still the G-string has retained its function. Who doesn't love a no panty lines look and some of its meaning? And in the last year, more celebrities have been ushering the look back into style. Okay, sorry, I keep interrupting. <laughs> if you watch my Trashy to Classy series, 
uh, one of my pieces of advice is to not look to celebrities as your role models. And this is why, because I feel like celebrities uh, latch on to these outrageous trends just to remain relevant and to shock people, truly to shock people. And that's why they do it in order to remain in the headlines. Oh, look, so-and-so is showing her underwear outside of her clothing. And then all of the you know people are featuring that person and they get a lot of free press. And that's why they do a lot of what they do. That, that's what motivates it. So that's why it's dangerous to have celebrities as your role models. Um, it goes on. I'm not going to read this whole article. But why am I bringing this up? Because it needs to be talked about. Okay, so a lot of times people say, Jennifer, why do you even talk about these things? It's not classy. It's not. Uh, and I think because I have this unique channel where I do highlight certain disturbing trends in society because I think it is important to talk about them. And I think that if uh, young people, for example, are watching this and they hear me maybe give my opinion on it, gives an opinion that they might not have heard of before, it might cause them to question and to think, you know, just because this is showing up on the fashion runways, is this a good thing? So you have all sorts of pictures and examples here. Basically, of women's underwear showing above the pants on purpose. So the pants are low rise, the underwear is up. So I like to also give my opinion and I think that this is what I would call a trashy look. <laughs> People do not like that adjective trashy. Again, I'm not calling the person trashy, I'm calling the behavior trashy but I don't think anyone should be showing their underwear on purpose. So yes, you might show bra straps on accident, you might bend over and accidentally show, but when you're blatantly doing it on purpose, I believe that that is tacky. I just don't think that it's a good look. I don't care what they're doing on the runways or what celebrity or pop star is doing on their Instagram posts. It's just a blatant um, shock factor because underwear is something that, I mean, it's in the name, underwear. You are supposed to wear this under your garments. This is not outerwear. So a G-string or underwear on a man or a woman should be underneath the clothing. So a lot of people don't like it as well when men will sag their trousers and show their underwear on purpose. This is something that schools have to deal with a lot, right? And there's a reason, because it is called underwear and it should be under the clothing. And just because a lot of famous people, I'm looking at some of these pictures and I can't even, they're just, it's bad, are showing this and trying to normalize that and make that cool does not mean that it is. That is my strong opinion. I'm sure I'm going to get people uh, in the comments who disagree with me and that's absolutely fine. Let us know why you think that this is a good trend if you, if you think it is. But I like to highlight this because it's important to show people how far and how the boundaries are really being pushed in our society and they're easily pushed because no one questions them. Okay, and the last article was sent to me by Ashley and this is about Joan Collins, the famous actress. Joan Collins says wearing jeans and t-shirts is tragic. So here we go. Joan Collins has been spotted in sequins, feathers, and at one time an excessive amount of shoulder pads, but you will likely never see the Dynasty star in one of your closet's most frequented staples again. Collins, the face of Valentino's Christmas campaign, which was released on Tuesday, had a lot to say about the current fashion trends in an interview with Vogue. Despite thriving in a time that is becoming more welcoming to 80s style ensembles for special events, the 86-year-old actress is less than impressed with casual wear that is so often seen in day-to-day -day modern life. I really hope that people will spend more money on clothes because nobody dresses up anymore, Collins told Vogue. If you do, then people stare at you or make cutting remarks. Well, maybe not cutting, but they'll say something like, oh, look at you, you're all dressed up. I did a whole video on that, by the way. I find that very sad because it will be the end of women buying elegant clothes in stores. Everybody's going to end up in jeans and t-shirts, which I think is tragic. The actress doubled down on her hatred of jeans in the interview, despite launching her own Joan Collins jeans line in 1981. I hate jeans. I hate them. They're so unflattering. And I hate jeans with the holes in the knees or holes anywhere, Collins said. <laughs> I like people who are outspoken like this and aren't afraid of uh, offending. 
Of course, the soap opera star has never been shy about her opinions on denim in the past either. In 2010, Collins took a stand against jeans when speaking to the Daily Mail after learning that the Ritz Hotel would allow people in for breakfast while wearing the wardrobe staple. I haven't liked jeans for years, probably because their ubiquity has become terribly boring, Collins said. Do people really want to conform to looking just like everyone else? She added, jeans have never been sophisticated. I find this very interesting. I think women of her generation really don't like jeans. And the other day um, for Thanksgiving, my whole family was here and we were looking at a picture of ourselves from the 90s, it was the late 90s. And we were on my grandmother's porch and we were all wearing jeans. And my grandmother was wearing black slacks and one of my daughters pointed it out. She said, why isn't she wearing jeans? And my cousin Rich said, she wouldn't be caught dead in jeans. <laughs> And that is so true. My grandmother would not, I never saw her in jeans. She wouldn't be caught dead in them. I think a lot of older people really do feel that way. And, and I think it's quite funny. Of course, they are very entitled to their opinion. Now I do wear jeans. I like to dress up my jeans. So I'm not, you're not going to find me in ripped jeans that I really don't like that trend either where they're ripped all the way up. For example, I just, I hate that trend as well. <laughs> and, uh, but that's okay. You know, that's just a personal preference. Um, but I, I could tell you, I feel the way she does about jeans and t-shirts. That's how I feel about wearing your gym clothes everywhere. I really do feel like that. And I think it's a shame. I think it's just the um, over casualization of society and the fact that, yeah, women are not wearing elegant clothes anymore. And I do think that that's a shame. So what do you think about Joan Collins opinion on jeans and t-shirts? Are they tragic? I would love to know your thoughts on all of these articles down below. Please leave your comment and your comment could be chosen as comment of the week here on The Daily Connoisseur. I'd once again, like to thank Italo Jewelry for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you check out their links down below. They would make an excellent gift this holiday season and they're always running some sort of wonderful promotion. So thank you to Italo for sponsoring today's video. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time on The Daily Connoisseur. Bye.